Hello, my name is Daniel Shivak. Here at Penn State, I've watched quite a few TED Talks. As a challenge from Dr. Darren Thornton in Doc Seminar, this paper, Music or Music, What's in a Verb, is inspired by the TED Lecture genre. In preparation, I looked for common threads among them. It seemed to me, whether the talker is an educator, a philosopher, a biologist, or a business person, every TED Talk is about a revolution. And so, I asked myself, what revolution is important to my own field, music education? My revolution begins with a question. How does music as a verb, or as a noun, affect what music teachers understand, talk about, decide as meaningful content, value, and teach in our music classrooms? To understand what benefits using noun music or verb music might have for music teachers, let's begin with some basic definitions. Nouns are often described as referring to places, things, states, or qualities. In particular, music educators have used noun music to refer to music as a thing. Verbs typically express action, state, or a relation between two things. There may be potential for music educators exploring the possibility of music as action or relating to things. Music education philosophers like David Elliott, Tom Rogalski, and Philip Alperson, and musicologist Christopher Small began exploring the possibility of talking about music as an active verb in the 1990s. In education, the power of verbing education has also been explored. In talking about alternatives to educational systems, Esteva, Stuchel, and Prakash wrote, Inasmuch as a noun education imposes a completely passive dependence on a system that provides education, people are substituting this noun with the verbs to learn and to study. Unlike the nouns, these verbs reestablish the autonomous capacity for building creative relationships with, with others and with nature. Relationships that generate knowledge and wisdom. Let's use a video that might be part of a music lesson to illustrate the possibilities of both noun music and verb music. In this clip from the 1994 film, The Shawshank Redemption, Andy, played by Tim Robbins, and Red, played by Morgan Freeman, are inmates in a dehumanizing prison system. Andy, who works in the warden's office, locks himself in to share a powerful moment of musicking. I have no idea to this day what those two Italian ladies were singing about. 
Truth is, I don't want to know. Some things are best left unsaid. I like to think they were singing about something so beautiful it can't be expressed in words and makes your heart ache because of it. I tell you those voices soared higher and farther than anybody in a great place dares to dream. It was like some beautiful bird flapped into our drab little cage and made those walls dissolve away. And for the briefest of moments, every last man at Shawshank felt free. It pissed the warden off something awful. Open the door. Open it off! The frame, open this door! Turn that off! I am warning you, Dufresne, turn that off! in the hole for that little stunt. On your feet! Andy's act of sacrifice seems to illustrate the power music has in people's lives. By exploring the possibility of now music in the classroom, or music as the object of study, some of what teachers and students can know is the tonality of the music, the history of this music. Students can learn to assess the quality of this musical performance, and can learn the music's pitches, rhythms, form, and style. These are all valid to know about the music. However, if music teachers open up space to also consider the verb music, we can open up a new set of understandings. We can explore the ways in which Andy musics in protest of an unjust prison system, how Andy musics beauty into the lives of others located in a place and time and how red music's a fleeting moment of humanness. I feel these issues cut more quickly to the essence of the musical experience. Christopher Small's conceptualization of musicking as metaphor for ideal relationships seems appropriate. The act of musicking establishes in the place where it is happening a set of relationships, and it is in these relationships that the meaning of the act lies. Between the people who are taking part in whatever capacity in the performance. They model or stand as metaphor for ideal relationships as they imagine them to be. The ideal relationships Andy and Red were expressing were human, loving, joyful, a bit rebellious, and perhaps even spiritual. Musicking these relationships may even be more powerful than Small's term metaphor implies. Because John Dewey suggested there cannot be two sets of ethical principles, one for life in the school and the other for life outside of the school, I had to consider what verb musicking might mean for my own teaching practice. I came across the website creativeresistance.org recently and found a repository for music in protest of injustices. Songs and visual art aimed at ending fracking in New York City, improving educational opportunities, labor rights, protesting corporate personhood, and class inequality were all present. Further, it seems like a place where people can submit art, a possible way to musically break down school and society separation as doing in education demands. One helpful model I use to understand educational philosophies are to express their means and aims. Traditionally, music educators have viewed music as the aim of education. However, if we reconceptualize musicking as the means of education, space is open for many teacher and student generated aims. Teachers and students might music revolution, courage, hope, agency, music skills, love, creativity, rootedness, faith, confidence, or small changes in the world. This philosophy of musicking is fundamentally revolutionary and can be guided by the teacher and student's values. The problem with many educational philosophies is the binary of either-or, but I don't see verb music, noun music, as an either-or 
proposition. Rather, teachers can use both to open up epistemological possibilities of what counts as music knowledge in the classroom. As music teachers, we can expand our and our students' understandings of music by exploring both noun music and verb music in the classroom. I believe teachers and students can music in school and society in ideal relationships to build creative relationships between people and change the world for the better. Finally, I want to leave you with a video of Paul Robeson singing to construction workers in Sydney, Australia. Robeson's music best represents my own music values as his musicking was historical, local, activistic, and aimed at making the world better. He's singing about Swedish-American wobbly activist Joe Hill, who died in 1915. And this is one about Joe Hill, one of our great uh, heroes in the American working class movement. They framed him on a murder charge, but his spirit still lives in the hearts of all the American working class. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. In Salt Lake City, Joe says I, him standing by my bed. They framed you on a murder charge, says Joe, but I ain't dead. Says Joe, but I ain't dead. And standing there as big as life, and smiling with his eyes, says Joe, what they can never kill, went on to organize, went on to organize. From San Diego up to Maine, in every mine and mill, where working men defend their rights, it's there you'll find Joe Hill. It's there you'll find Joe Hill. Thank you. May your own revolution succeed.